The number 100 team in the Hoop School Media Top 100 Countdown is the VCU Rams. What's up, college basketball fans? I'm Hoop School Media co-founder Austin Getchy, and welcome to the Hoop School Media Top 100 College Basketball Teams Countdown. In this series, we'll be counting down our top 100 teams for next season and releasing a video every day until the college basketball season begins. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and give our social medias a follow. Simple things like that help more college basketball fans like you enjoy our content. With that being said, enjoy the rest of the video and 99 other videos in this series. VCU had quite the offseason but came out of it in a good spot, but let's talk about how they got there. On March 29th, 12 days after VCU's tournament game, head coach Mike Rhodes departed to take the same position at Penn State. This led to a mass exodus of Rams in the portal. Atlantic 10 player of the year Ace Baldwin, along with role player Nick Kern, followed Rhodes to Penn State. Jameer Watkins transferred to Florida State, Jalen Deloach transferred to Georgia, Jaden Nunn transferred to Baylor, and Brandon Johns Jr. and David Shriver exhausted their eligibility. VCU didn't waste time hiring a new coach. The same day Rhodes accepted the Penn State job, the Rams hired Ryan Odom, who was a Utah State coach at the time. Odom was coming off a season where he led Utah State to an at-large bid and was a coach of UMBC when they were the first 16 seed to beat a one seed in 2018. Odom had some work in the portal to do, and that started with taking two starters from his Utah State team, Max Scholga and Sean Berstow. Scholga is a versatile guard, having the ability to play either guard positions. He averaged 11.9 points, 4.5 rebounds, and 4 assists per game this past season, which was a big breakout season for Scholga, as he averaged 4.4 points a year before. This upcoming year, he will likely be asked to carry a bigger role for the team, as he could step into the fold as VCU's number one option. Bersto was a solid player for Utah State in his own right, putting up averages of 10.3 points, 5.2 rebounds, and 2.6 assists. His three-point shooting numbers took a huge jump, connecting on over 38% of his attempts. While he's not a huge volume shooter, he is on the upwards trend. He brings some playmaking abilities to the table as well, dishing out over three assists in his last five games of the season. Ryan Onum didn't look to Utah for his other guard transfer additions. In fact, he didn't even look outside the city as he was able to pull in Richmond redshirt freshman guard Jason Nelson. While Nelson was inefficient, he showed some flash of being an impactful player in the conference and his best days should be ahead. The other guard he got isn't new to A-10 at all. Joe Bamsteel, who was all conference with George Washington in the 2021-22 season, transferred him from Oklahoma but likely won't be eligible this season with the updated transfer rules. However, he's still a valuable pickup for Odom in the, for the 2024-25 season, as he's proven to be a high-level A-10 player. Odom also took some chances on Power 6 transfers from struggling teams, taking lanky forward Kwani Kwani from Cal and big man Roosevelt Wheeler from Louisville. Kwani showed flashes with Cal, averaging 9 points per game this season, which was more than his other three years in college combined. Wheeler hasn't shown much, but the change of scenery could be very beneficial for the former top 75 recruit. Odom was also able to keep some players out of the portal, the highest scoring being Zeb Jackson, a former Michigan transfer who averaged over 5 points per game this past season. Rising sophomores Fats Billups and Christian Furman didn't see the court too much that season, but were both 4-star recruits and could emerge with so much uncertainty in the lineup. The other returner was Toy Lawal. Lawal was originally from London, and Ryan Odom added some more English flavor to the roster with the addition of Michael Bell. Odom was able to get Bell over Dayton at the end, something that VCU fans will consistently be reminding Flyer fans of if he ends up being a successful player. With this collection of players who are largely new to each other, there could be some growing pains to start the season. The good news is Odom is a coach who plays the strength of his roster and gives him the best chance to win. In his most recent season, Utah State was based around a perimeter, with the year before based mostly around their forwards. While this VCU team is lacking shooters, the chances are high they'll try to play more in transition, with athletic transfers who are more inside scorers. Overall, this VCU team should be competitive in conference play. While I don't think they'll be as good as last year's team that made the tournament, they aren't terribly far behind. They will be among the teams in the mix for the A-10 auto bid. Right now, I currently have them sitting at 5th in the conference, but the gap between 2 and 5 isn't really that big at all. Even with a completely new look, the Rams fans should be still excited for this year and the years to come under Odom's leadership. Thanks for watching this video. VCU fans, let me know in the comments what you think about the ranking and where you put them in your own personal rankings. We will see you tomorrow with number 99 team in the country. Make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss it.